Holy shit, everyone. We hit episode 100. I'm ultra gassed right now because I, yeah, this is huge. I mean, yeah, we've done probably in total more than 100 podcasts, but like this is like officially episode 100. I'm, I'm just, yeah, thank you so much. I'm blown away. I can't believe we got here. I'm really glad you guys are get behind why, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. I'm glad you're getting value out of it. This has been an incredible journey. Like I've spoken with some of my idols. I've spoken with people that have inspired me to do more. And it's just insane how this is reaching people. So yeah, way more, <laughs> way more content to come. We'll be talking about episode 500 in, in, I don't know when, but yeah, it, this is not going to stop. This is only the beginning. Um, yeah, Thank you, just literally from, from the bottom of my heart to to every one of you who's listened, who's downloaded the episodes or anything. Just, yeah, thank you and much, much more to come. Hope you enjoyed today's episode. Definitely check out Alex on Instagram. He's a huge inspiration to me, a lot of other people out here. So definitely check him out. It will be a good investment of your time. Let me know what you think of today's episode. See you all next week. Peace. All right, Alex. You're, you're an inspirational dude, and, and this is why I wanted to have you on episode 100 of the 100, jeez, you're double where I am, man. You're oh, well man. ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I've, I've done loads, but you know, um, yeah, this, after I came to the live event last week, uh, by the way, yeah. everyone who's watching and listening, we're going to be referring to a few things that Alex has done. So he has his own podcast. Uh, he he's great at uh, producing Instagram content. Go and check him out. All the links are in the description. The podcast that I'm going to be referring to is the one um, episode 50, I believe. You and Anton. Yes. Um, yeah, man. I'm going to be referring to that a lot. So guys, go and listen to that first, and then come back to this. It'll probably make more sense. Alex, there's there's a lot of guys and girls out there that are making excuses, right? They they maybe they were in your position. They're approaching 30 and they're panicking a little bit. I don't really know what to do, but at the same time, I want to stay in the comfort zone. I don't want to stop, you know, going out and fucking around with my friends. What yeah. keeps you disciplined? Oh, man, that's a great question. Jeez, uh, talk about a cracking <laughs> opening question. Um, what keeps me disciplined? I guess motivation for wanting better for myself, uh, first and foremost. And I think just the continual thirst for learning and sorry i'm going to take this off because it's scratching my neck okay. um, uh, first for learning and education um and educating myself and trying to like i said better myself and wanting more for myself so that's probably the main things really mm. you know like in in this generation that we see of like uh, i think they call it millennials but i don't know what age group that car is up to 35 right yeah i think so so in this generation, I've seen a lot of um, just, yeah, like not, oh, what was, so what's the point in me learning and developing myself? What's the point yeah. of acquiring all this knowledge, listening to these podcasts? And, I, and if you're not going to use it, I would say, don't, what's the point? Like, don't use it. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. What, what do you, where do you think that, that attitude is coming from of like, let's stay in the comfort zone. Let's not, you know, do anything outside of that. I mean, it's just the easy thing to do, isn't it? It's easy to be comfortable. It's easy to stay relaxed. It's easy to go home and put the TV on and sit there for three hours, numbing your brain after work. It's easy to, you know, just do nothing on a weekend. You know, it's easy to go out drinking and getting boozed up and, you know, whatever else people might get up to on weekends. You know, that's that's the easy decisions because that, that's the comfortable thing, like you said. And that's what that's one thing that I've always not really been... No, I've done it, don't get me wrong, but I've never really felt, I just felt like I'm not fulfilling myself when I do that. Like, it's it's just like short-term gains. Mm. You might just be, you know, coming home from work every day, sitting down, watching three hours of TV or whatever, and not doing much of your evenings. But then over a course of like a year or six months, you know, how many evenings, how many hours have you wasted? And, you know, we've got, you know, it's your choice if that's what you want to do but for me it doesn't it doesn't fulfill me and like I said I do have a sense of I guess wanting more for myself and they're the times that are easy for me right now to utilize the best I can hmm. yeah you know the wanting better for yourself thing is uh definitely appeals to me because I, w I worked in situations where I just I fucking hated it and I couldn't handle it and yeah. the main, the, the way out I saw was like, if you grind, like your life depends on it, 
and on something that you actually care about, there are results that come with that. And I think this is extremely important for people who are lacking direction, for those yeah. of us who you know, may have followed what our parents told us and stuff like that. There's, there's another thing that you mentioned in your podcast, right? Coming from the old country, like the, the people who came before us, we're like, yeah. we're the ones who came after them. There's a certain level. I think Megan uh, said it when, when she was speaking at the event. She said, um, yeah. you know, she can't face her ancestors in the circle if she was like, oh, my life was hot. Like, what do you yeah, think yeah, yeah. seeing where you came from has done for you? Oh, it's massive, man. Like, you know, I was, I was just literally <laughs> it's so weird because I was thinking about that as you were about to go into that question. I was thinking how that has had an effect on me. Like, you know, me, you and a lot of people I come across come from immigrant families. You know, my family and my grandparents came over from Italy you know, many, many moons ago, my, my, my nonna came over when she was 14 uh, and, and my other grandparents came over probably similar ages, to be honest. And they, I've seen them build a life for themselves in a country where they turned up on the land with literally nothing in their pockets. So I've seen what they've had to sacrifice. I've seen what they've built for their family, i.e. my mum and dad and, you know, their, their brothers and sisters, my auntie, aunties and uncles and in turn how that's affected me and my upbringing and you know what right do i have to just sit back and enjoy this great life that i might have had you know growing up in london when you know and taking on all the benefits of everything my grandparents have and my parents have put in over the years without doing that myself you know and wanting better for the next next batch of our family which would be my kids or my sister's kids you know that to me doesn't seem right and it's you know as you said like megan said man it's like how can I face my 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 grandparents or well there's, I've only got one left but how could I face my grandparents and not have that mentality and not see you know I used to see my dad coming home every night working in a restaurant as a chef coming home at like nine ten o'clock every night having been there since before I left in in the morning for school so it's like how can I not apply that same work rate to what I want to do you mm -hmm. know and I think the other thing is like it it, it I think it is, it's a generational thing. I think that kind of, that level of work rate maybe kind of feeds through in a kind of innate way as well, rather than it just being um, something that I want to satisfy. And I actually remember saying to my, my nonna before she passed away, saying that um, I made a promise to her that I was going to, you know, make good of my life in terms of doing something that I wanted to do. And I guess it's not something I really reflect, reflect on a lot, sorry, but is actually must be buried deep down in the back of my mind because ever since that day I have you know gone out of my way to try and make something for myself and that was god knows how many years ago man five six years ago maybe maybe more I don't even I can't remember but I remember having that distinct conversation when she was lying in bed very ill and I, I made that promise to her so it's obviously something that I've carried with me for a long time I've just wanted to you know make go of it really Bro, that's, that, that speaks to me on many levels, man. I yeah. think, yeah, it gave me emotional as well. I, I, in this room I sit in, uh, there's a picture of my grandfather on the wall and my grandma yeah. and my other grandma. And yeah, man, I look at that like, shit, you, you guys got spit on uh, by uh, like racism and like you, you got told like, you know, you're not allowed in here and stuff like that. I don't have shit to complain about. Like, re I don't. Yeah. Like, there's no, that persecution doesn't exist today. So, yeah, I, it definitely speaks to me, man. That when when mm. you see them and you think about what they've gone through to get, to bring us here, it's amazing. But yeah, was, on, it, was it your parents or your grandparents that came over? So my grandparents, um, my yeah. dad came here when he was like five or six. My mom was born here. So yeah. there's, there's some generational differences, but um, they're, they're very much like in an old school mentality that, yeah, that, yeah. that comes a lot with a lot of challenges, but that's not a conversation for today. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. I was going to ask you, yeah, so look, um, if everyone doesn't know, Alex works at the BBC at the moment, but you're transitioning out of this role, right? Like, yeah. what... Uh, a lot of people straight away they're like oh you work at the bbc and then as soon as i said you're transitioning out their role they're like what the fuck like what what's the thought process there um <laughs> i don't know to be honest no i'm joking um <laughs> it's i'm kind of like in a position now where i've been at the bbc for four and a half years um and it's amazing you know very you know 
huge opportunity you know that that's something it will stay with me forever literally like the experiences and what I've learned here and everything but I'm just at a stage now where I feel if I don't make a go of the things that I want to be doing which is building up this brand and business that I started a year and a half ago with just a podcast then when is the time if it's not now then then when is it so it's something I've been mulling over for a while and I just I came to the decision um, just after having a lot of conversations recently with friends and people that I connect with regularly and just, yeah it just seems like now's the right time for me to do it and you know if I go three months down the line six months down the line a year down the line and it doesn't work out I just can't get another job so you know mm. it's about for me taking a risk and taking a, a leap of faith and I think the the past year and a half having started the podcast and the brand and dreamers disease and everything I'm kind of doing is has led me to this moment in time um, and I'm, I'm willing to kind of take that action which is what I have done and try and you know make a go of it myself and put all of my energy and and everything else into it whilst also you know using the skills that I've got and have learned over the years through work and my career to to help that and help finance it through some freelance work for now and then going into you know trying to build up this this business in itself man that's so you know like the the way you describe it it's like yeah it it makes sense to to people who are like yeah the, you know when it you want to follow something right you want to follow that thing yeah that you don't want it just to let it go to waste and yeah you're doing it like full force is you get way better results than if you're doing like a little bit a little bit a little bit doesn't really yeah. translate there's something i wanted to ask you about right so uh, alex's podcast called dreamers disease uh, first of all, love the name. Definitely speaks to a lot of us. Um, what do you think dreamer's disease means to you? To me? So um, it's basically two sides to it, right? So the, the podcast is named after Stormzy's EP that he put out before his album. And the way it came about was when I came up with the idea of the, the podcast and the kind of format, I was looking for a name. Um, and basically I was going through different um, keywords that I thought would I could relate to it somehow so I was writing down loads of things like you know happiness and inspiration and motivation and you know this that and the other and I wrote, I wrote down dreams dreaming um, and then from that I just remembered the name of this EP dreamers disease and the name just really stuck in my head and I kept I kept you know scribbling more things down over a period of like a couple of weeks writing down ideas but I kept coming back to dreamers disease and essentially, the reason why is because, to me, Stormzy's interpretation on on what the two words mean is the dreamers. The dreamers disease is someone who's living out their dream and really following their passions and really making go of what it is they do. But to me, the flip side of it is there's also the dreamers disease in that it's the disease of dreaming that stops us from living our lives to our full potential because we're too content sitting back and dreaming about them rather than taking action so i wanted to be able to encompass both of those sides of what the two words mean in one platform and you know hopefully that's kind of what i've managed to do and continue to do but yeah i'm gonna be saying this like to everyone i meet lately like you need to go and listen to this podcast because it's fucking incredible like the, the guests you've had the questions you ask the types of conversations like that's what i got into this man i like talking to people but like mm. hearing the stories, like when you had uh, Chidera on and Hussein Manwa and Ro yeah. uh, Megan, like these people may not be known to the rest of the world. And I don't think you know, you have to know them to be able to resonate with what you're talking about. And that when you asked Megan at the end of the live show, like, what does it mean to you? For me, all I could think about was like, the, from it, like in my interpretation, the, the disease is an insatiable hunger to achieve more because you're dreaming like, okay, I've hit this milestone. Let's go next. Let's go next. Let's go next. And yeah. someone asked me about retirement a few months ago and I feel like slapping them. I was like, no man, I'm doing this till I die. Like it doesn't yeah, yeah, have to yeah. be a podcast. doesn't have to be coaching. It doesn't have to be any of those things. It is what I like to do, what I find yeah. enjoyable. That's never going to go away. And you, I think you can call it a disease. You can call it a condition, whatever it is. I think there's this, something inside of all of us that is yearning for more and yeah. unfortunately in this day and age because we've got smartphones because we've got 
everything at the touch of a button, instant gratification, is sub is uh, is allowing us to like suppress that desire for more. Like, yeah. Do you, first of all, do you get do you do you agree with what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. That's you know it's, that's one of the flip sides of of the meaning of it. You know, it's it is that that desire to wanting to you know do things like you said, and it's dreaming about these things, but we have to be able to take the action. You know, if you're not taking the action, then it will always remain a dream. Hmm. The, the reason I asked you if you agree is because I want to get your take on it, right? What is the most uh, powerful, like, no, what, that's what, basically, what's the, what's the distraction that you got rid of that upped your, like, work rate or drive, like, the most? Uh, well, um, the distraction I got rid of probably would have been what I was doing with my time in the evenings, to be honest. You know, once I started set off on this project of the podcast and I was dedicated to, to doing it and I couldn't wait to get home from work to do more work on it. Or I was waking up in the morning and I was planning already what I was going to be doing when I got home in the evening, you know, and it just, it, you know, going back to it, it did become a kind of addiction, I guess. And it still is. And, you know, I've always traditionally had that because, you know, before the podcast and before working at the BBC and whatever, I had a blog with my friend Moz and again, same thing, I used to come home from work and blog for like an hour, two hours, every day, you know, before dinner, after dinner, before I went to bed, I'd be on it, like in the mornings, if something had dropped, you know, on my lunch break, if this, you know, someone had dropped, you know, Kanye had dropped a new music video, I'd be on my phone trying to blog <laughs> during my lunch break in, in, in a, when I used to work in a factory. So I've always just had that kind of utilizing that time element. And as I came up with this project, I just wanted to maximize it as much as I could and, you know, using the three hours, four hours sometimes in the evening that I have spare. And that's what I see it is spare time. Like how am I utilizing that mm. to benefit me? And not just me, man. It's like, you know, everything I'm doing, the reason I get these people on and share their stories is because I want people to understand that, okay, you might see someone like Chidera, the slum flower or Megan or Hussein Manawa or DJ Semtex or, you know, all these people who are seemingly doing very well at what they do. But once you start to understand their journey to get there, you soon understand that they have to start at a point. And it's the starting point that led to the next series of events, which then led to the next series of events, which then led them down the line to where they are now. So it's about trusting the process. And that's an, I know it's a very cliche thing to say, but it is. It's about trusting the process and just enjoy the, enjoy the journey, man. It's like... God knows where I'm going to be in, in, you know, two years, five years, 10 years. I've got an idea of where I'd like to be, but, you know, who knows where it could, it could lead to, man. It could lead to a number of different, you know, routes and opportunities. And I'm just open to, to all of those at the minute and not really tying myself down to too much. Mm. Yeah, I think there's a danger of, like, um, looking for security. And um, yeah, people, yeah. people were telling me this, oh, you're 24, you should be there. And I'm like, bitch, I'm going to die shut the fuck up about security what's secure yeah. like your heart could stop like that tomorrow like stop yeah, crying yeah. that okay speaking of which right this got me ultra gassed when i saw i i was i felt like going for a run i saw that gary v was on your thing i was like yeah. holy fuck first of all massive respect secondly Thank how you. the fuck did you get him on your podcast um <laughs> it's very sneaky to be honest man like <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. It was like a sneak attack, but it was like you know I, I've listened to it and kind of um, um, engaged in a lot of his content over the last year or so, and you know he's, I like the way he kind of is very just straight to the point about stuff. He's very matter of fact. He's very, he's very much like just do it, like just do it. Like if the opportunity is there, make sure you do it. And um, <laughs> I don't know if I should be saying this on the record, but whatever. I was I was working you know one extra and my boy Reese Parkinson, who's one of our presenters and a good friend of mine. Um, he told me like a few months before he was coming in, like I've spoken to Gary's people, like I think he's going to be coming in to do an interview with me. He was like, I'll let you know when it is, when we sort it out and, you know, try and you should try and get something with him. So I was like, okay, cool. Right. I had it in the back of my mind, maybe a week, two weeks before Reese was like, right, he's coming in on this day at this time. <clears throat> um, obviously I have to do my job as well, which is social media. So I had to get bits and pieces with him and for, for one extra anyway. So I was in the studio, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to bring in my stuff, I'm going to bring in my microphone, my recording device, and at the end of the interview, I'm literally going to pounce on him and just 
literally that's what I did. <laughs> the interview finished, and I had to I had to get him. To be fair, I had to get him to do some stuff to camera for our kind of like um, the content we want to put out as one extra. But essentially, when he'd done it, I put my book in front of him. I said, Gary, do you mind signing my book? Um, and then second of all, I got a podcast, and I just went into and I gave him like the thirty second elevator pitch, and then just started asking him questions. And he was more than happy to sit there and answer them, um, you know, as as I thought he would be. And I just had to find that time and, and use that opportunity, man, to to get him on because it's not someone who's just been a massive inspiration to me, but you know, it's someone who is out there really, really doing things and really making a difference in his field, not just from a career point of view, but from his own personal brand point of view. And that was a massive moment for me personally to be sat in front of him. Literally, I mean, his face was about. 30 centimeters away from mine we were looking into each other's eyes and just he was telling me the answers to the questions i was given and that just felt like a real moment in terms of like i'm on the right path here like i'm really doing something right now that i want to be doing and if you told me a year and a half ago or a year ago or whenever it was when i first started listening to gary's stuff one day i'd be sat in front of him interviewing him and it'd be in however many months time i probably would have laughed and said no nah, i need like three four years for that but it happened you know, regardless of how it happened or where or why it happened. And that's because I took that opportunity to make it happen. I could have easily just like being shy and just, you know, did what I had to do for work and whatever. But so many people come up to me now and they're like, how did you get Gary on the podcast? Like, how was he? <laughs> what was he like? Like, did it, like it's, honestly, it's one of the first things that people who have listened to the podcast or who have discovered some of the content come to me and ask is because, you know, he's seen as this like, almost like a uh, uh, enigma of a figure that regular people like us aren't supposed to come in contact with because he's too busy having meetings with like whoever Michael Jordan or or you know like some business moguls and yeah the fact that he even was a pre, you know took the time to kind of have that conversation with me was was incredible as well I mean it was only like five minutes if that but it was five minutes more than I would have you know expected so yeah it was incredible Man, that is crazy. Uh, yeah, congratulations again, man. Because a lot of people wouldn't have taken the initiative. Um, yeah. I remember, like, I was trying to, I was sending him email after email after email, and I was sending his team, and I was trying to hit him up. And like, yeah, I think timing is a is a key thing there, but you don't really have yeah. control over it. With with when I saw that, I was like, yo, that that is really cool. And I'm I'm yeah. I'm not like. I don't think, you know, when you said that you, if you told me that a few years, like last year or something, I would have said, no, I would have needed more time. Yeah, yeah. There's a, I feel like there's a danger of, um, mm. I don't know if it's underestimating ourselves or like, I don't, I don't really know what else to call it. Like there's a danger of that thing negatively affecting the, the process of what we're doing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Well, it's, it's like an internal limitation, isn't it? Like, yeah. you know, you, you know, everyone's probably got an example of, of of it somewhere along the line i'm probably sure we all do it daily weekly monthly whatever and you know i'm kind of of that mentality at the minute and I'm, I'm not going to let those limitations those limiting beliefs that's what they call limiting beliefs hold me back and stop me from doing things so like another example was at the start of the year i said right i want to have free live dreamers disease shows this year 2018 so I've just had one last week, as you know. I've got another one in September, and then I'm going to plot and try and put another one in for December. So even though I said this is what I'm going to do, there's been a number of things that have stopped me, but I'm not letting that, you know, be the, the, the defining point in me not having two or three live shows this year. And the fact that I've already got two locked in, one's done, one's coming in September, you know what I mean? It's, I'm already well on my way to that, and it's like I could easily be like, oh, oh man, it's August, like... It's only like a few months left of the year, four months, like, oh, it's not going to happen. How am I going to do free shows? But you can make it happen, man. It's like mm. not about trying to limit. I've done it enough in my life, man. Like, you know, th those of you and y you yourself who have listened to episode 50 have heard some of the stuff that I've put myself through um, in the past. And it's like, I'm not willing to accept that anymore. I'm willing to, to push myself and make myself great and make myself the best version I can be. And that's all I'm kind of focusing on. And the way I can kind of um, externalize that and, and make that a reality is by doing everything that I'm doing right now. And that that's so important for me. And we're all here for that, man. We're all here. There's no reason why none of us can't be the best version of ourselves and why we have to hold ourselves back and why we let 
our past situations, you know, hang on to us and drag us down. Like the way I look at things is our future, you know, the future chapters of our life are yet to be written and it's our duty and it's down to us to make them the best chapters that are yet to be written. Yeah. Look, you, you're definitely speaking my language, man. This, this whole like, you know, pursuit of greatness, um, the desire to, to, have something that fulfills you rather than your basic needs and stuff getting taken care of. And then literally just, just, so, just here to exist is not like living. Right. And yeah, I think a lot of us, especially younger people, we got that, like that thing inside, which is like, I'm not settling for the BS, like, mm. you know, going to work every day, coming back home, being too tired to do shit and just not liking the situation. So along those lines, like what does the, what, what's the, if you're climbing the mountain right now, like what does the top look like to you? What's the greatness that you're looking to achieve? Just like, I guess an ultimate sense of fulfillment and like inner peace and inner joy. Um, and that just comes from, and I think I'm close to that kind of feeling. And I think that comes from not worrying about, like I said, all the BS, all the external stuff that we do worry about, all the material things in life. You know, unfortunately, we do have to have some money to to survive in this world to a certain extent. But that's not something I'm going to compromise by, like, staying in a job where I earn decent money for not chasing the purpose and the dreams that I want to chase and working towards that. So I think it's just having a, a complete understanding of of that for me is so important and that is kind of the top of that you know mountain of greatness or whatever you want to call it you know what about you what's what would yours be oh man it's gonna i'm gonna sound like a conceited fuck right now but i already got there <laughs> yeah, man. that's um, great man if you're there and you're looking down and on the view and you're you know showing people the way up man what's nothing wrong with that you know yeah i mean like it's funny because I've overcome like some really significant challenges, which um, I've talked about in another episode that's coming out after this. I wanted to make sure this yeah. was 100, but like the next, yeah, I've talked a little bit about it, but you know, significant childhood traumas, uh, lots of dysfunctional shit happening when I was at university. I've seen a lot of dumb stuff. I've done a lot of dumb shit and mm-hmm. to have overcome them, to have conquered my own personal demons, to stop the alcohol abuse and things like that. I'm, I'm, and to be in a position where I'm passing on wisdom to other people, I'm coaching them, I'm building confidence, I'm helping entrepreneurs like realize their dreams regardless of like, you know, being authentic regardless of what their friends think about and all these other things. Those were things I struggled with and yeah. it fucking tore me apart for like 20 years. I'm from the Punjabi community. My community is fucking backwards with loads of stuff. Yeah. Not, I'm proud to be what I am. That's great. But yeah, there's, there's certain parts of it that were really limiting. So like, the the mountain analogy that I use is like I've climbed one right now and there's there's a fuckload more man like I, I might mm. be on the top of this one or what I think is the top but even after I've climbed lots of other mountains there's still the sky there's still space there's still like all of these other things out there that I want to try and do but the main thing for greatness is like to for me just to be at peace with whatever part of the process you're in right now yeah. otherwise you get fucked up majorly exactly. like you start entertaining the bullshit that doesn't even make sense you know like i was talking to someone the other day about trivial shit like oh you know you, you haven't sorted out your beard that yeah. now that we have instagram stuff that's become like oh my god you haven't sorted your beard out but you know 20 years ago it's like get a haircut tomorrow it's all good don't worry about yeah, it yeah 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 and we're, we're trivializing important things like how you show up powerfully at work for your partner for your friend what are you putting in your body? What's your mindset? Like that stuff's pushed to the back burner because you can't see it. And, yeah, and this, yeah. this is my like real emphasis for this year to get in front of more people, like to do more things in person, like your live shows. Um, I'm definitely gonna be promoting the fuck out of that. So as soon as you announce that, tell me and I'll put it Thank on my you. Instagram as well. But yeah, man, that, that my intention was just like, I want to put myself around people who have common ideas and we can help each other get to where we want to be. Like um, yeah, yeah, I use yeah. the analogy of like, you know, we're going up the mountain together. If you want to go fast, yeah, you can run and you'll probably sprain your ankle and you'll be fucked. But if you go with a group of friends, you're helping each other up. You've got sticks and all that to help you climb up. You sprain your ankle. Alex got you back. Megan got you back. Whoever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we, yeah. We're going to help each other get there. So that's the, that's what I'm trying to operate on right now. 
yeah i love that man yeah that's that's super important you know it's super important because at the end of the day you know i was just chatting to someone literally before i jumped on this this recording with you and you know we we're discussing all sorts of things but we were talking about that that similar thing of like you know being as a group together as humans you know and there's a famous quote i always get it wrong so forgive me but it's something like if you want to go if you want to go long go alone if you want to go far go together yeah, I think yeah. that's it I yeah, think if I've you go it right. fast, you go alone. You go and go far. That's it. That's it. Fast. That's it. Fast, not long. Yeah. So, and that's it, man. It's like t- together you can just, like you said, if one if one person falls or one person has a slip or a setback, the rest are there to catch you, to help you, and then you can carry on going together and become strong again. Whereas if you're going at it alone, you know, there's only certain ways you can do it. And I think fundamentally for me, trying to go at life alone in terms of going after you know, the good jobs that, you know, that, that career path, the money, the nice cars, whatever, that doesn't satisfy me. It doesn't fulfill me. And I'm getting a lot more fulfillment for doing, you know, giving my time to people, offering my time. Cause you know, there's an episode of my podcast with a guy called Joshua Coombs, which will be coming out in a few weeks. And we talked a lot about that giving of time and how important that is as an asset, because time is the most valuable thing we have. And the more you can offer that to people, the more powerful your time then becomes and the more mm. fulfilling it becomes. And that's where I'm at is I'm trying to use my time as best as I can in various different ways to be able to give to people. And that's like, yeah, man, super, yeah, super important. Yeah. And I think this is the best day and age to do it. You giving people mm. your time in podcasts, in your Instagram content, in the live shows, like there's, now is the best time and because you're like from where i'm sitting from what meeting you in person from watching and listening to the stuff that you're putting out i feel like it's coming from the place that you said it is there are yeah. a lot of other people that are doing this with the the sole intention of cool i'm going to leverage the fuck out of this time because it's an asset and i'm just going to try and get as much gain in the short term as possible but i think yeah there's no longevity in that there's no like let's look forward 10 years whose lives can I change? How, how many people yeah. are going to say to me, yeah, this is valuable. None, because you, I've got one person in mind and I'm not, I don't name names. I don't put people on blast, but like I, I've heard it a lot. You know, I've reached out to certain people to say, Hey, could we bounce some ideas about coaching off each other? You know, I think it might be helpful for our development. No, I'm going to crush you in this business. Fuck you. Whoa, man. Yeah. Doesn't sound like you want to help anyone except your damn self. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That you know, um, pursuit of material desires, like, um, you know, we, money is, is 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 a necessary thing, man. Everyone's got to eat. Everyone's got to put a roof over their head and stuff. How do you, how do you value, like, okay, I need this money to eat and I need this money to invest in my thing. How do you value, like, what the the time that you're giving is worth? Do you, if you know what I'm saying. That's a good question, actually. Um... I think it's invaluable, man. I think monetary values aside, I think giving, being able to offer that time, like this time right now that we're having this conversation is hopefully a lot more valuable to people that are listening, watching, whatever, than me saying, oh, here's $20 going, or 20 pounds here, go and take that. Do you know what I mean? They, they'll take a lot more from it rather than mm. taking that money and going to spend it on whatever they're going to spend it on. So I think it's, it's not something I... I value in a traditional way in terms of like put an, a figure or a number on it. Um, eventually I'll have to, cause that is, you know, fundamentally will be part of the kind of business that I'm trying to build. But I just mean as a general kind of sense, like I am trying to offer that time as much as I can to different people um, and, and trying to kind of help as where I can, you know? Mm. The, the, do you think it's weird that we sell time like, in, in you know to employers as a business like, i don't know it just seems to me it's like a strange thing yeah i, f- I think yeah man it is and i think about this a lot you know because it's like if you took money out of the world like how would the world function <laughs> would it function mm. you know ultimately we'd end up just making a new means of trade which is mm. essentially what money is as a means of trade is like i want this from you you want this from me so for me to get this i have to give you this amount or this is valued at this much for me to be able to get it. And I think if we took money out of the world, like, you know, when did money get, um, get invented? Like 
the cavemen probably didn't have money, but they probably would have mm. traded like, oh, I've just caught this wild boar. If, you, if I give you this, you give me what I want in return, which is maybe like a couple of horses to add to our pack or whatever. You know, it's like there wouldn't have been money, but it would have been that means of like trade. And I think that will always exist. So I think it's important for me right now and I think for other people to to understand that the value of money is insignificant because it's just a means of trade. And I think this is something that um, I ended up speaking about with Megan during the live recording or certainly beforehand. And it's like understanding that is so powerful as well. It's like that, that value that you're placing on things from a monetary point of view is only significant in terms of like what the value is actually to you. That's very, very real, man. I think the the scripture is one of my favorite things to quote sometimes. And uh, they said like money, oh, I don't know if this is paraphrasing because I don't remember exactly, but they say like money is not evil. It's the love of money that is evil. Mm, and yeah. and I did, bro, I've been guilty of it, man. I, I, was, I was in the club popping bottles saying, yeah, I got bitches and money and this stupid bullshit. And, but I, that's funny because at that time I fucking hated my life, but society would have me believe i was winning i was fucking man yeah, of the yeah. year because i'm standing there with this bottle of poison shouting about shouting the lyrics to this song about cars i will never own and and just stupid nonsense like yeah the, the love of money is uh, for me at that point was an escape of, of the reality yeah. like if you can say okay i'm gonna dedicate my time to acquiring as much money as possible so i can enjoy myself you're fucking up the base because you've mm. already resigned to this is God, like money is God. And if I don't have it, I'm not shit. But yeah, yeah. I think the things that money can't buy, this conversation, like mm. can't purchase it with, with, exactly. with money. Like you, you, you could put, purchase the, the, the t- someone's time and have conversation with them, but is it going to be real? Is it going to be authentic? Is it going to be like what exactly what you want it to be? Rarely. But if you invest your time and it's coming from pure intent, that you're just yeah. like, okay, let's have this conversation. Let's talk about some real shit that we both resonate with. That's, that's the, the essence. You can't buy that. You, you know, you, yeah, you, yeah. Can, you can steal from all of these other people what, what you think would work and put it all together. But if it's not coming from a real place, it will always break down. It will always like, be no, if noticed for what it is, just another imitation. And speaking of which, this is something I want to ask a lot of people about. What does it mean to you to be a real, well, I would say real man, but I mean like a real person, not like in terms of masculinity, but just like real. Um, I think it's honesty, openness, uh, showing vulnerability, accepting vulnerability, uh, understanding for other people, understanding for life, uh, enjoying the moment, uh, various different things, man working on yourself and you know trying to better yourself um doing the things that you love that you enjoy mm. um that would probably be the main ones just off the top of my head mm. that, How about that, you? yeah I'm, i think the most important when it when it comes to realness the one word that comes to me is unapologetic so yeah that i'm 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 gonna do what i want when i want with who i want and I don't have to give a fuck what anyone has to say or think about it. And when yeah. that re- when I started trying to embody that realness, it was so difficult, man. Like, you know, a big part of this journey is, uh, I think you talked about it as well in, in the podcast, is like, you've got to remove the dead weight. And people yeah. don't like to hear that shit. They don't want to hear, okay, I've been friends with Matthew for 19 years, but he started to like hate on me a little bit. So I don't want to remove him, but I'll just still be friends with him. Like I posted a short video today saying like, if you don't like someone, why the fuck are you saying hello to them? This, this, yeah, yeah. this things like that. Like I, I, everyone on this channel has heard me talk about it ad nausea, but like what, what's your experience been on removing that dead weight from your life? Uh, I guess for me that, that dead weight has been like not necessarily people, more situations Mm. more you know jobs that i haven't quite enjoyed or my own mindset so like you know so it's it's not there's not a quick fix to it but it's just you know filling my mind with more kind of positivity um is definitely a major thing 
and like trying to get rid of the you know it's still there sometimes the negativity and the negative voice that's you know in your head but instead of it being like nine out of ten days you know negative mindset negative head negative voice it's probably like three out of ten or two out Mm. of ten so it's you know it's been a slow process but I think that's been the main thing for me because it's not necessarily been the people I think it's more been the way that I've um um uh, what's the word I'm looking for here um interpreted life as a whole and situations and it's kind of yeah man that that's been the the big thing for me um and you know and then within that once you, you start to do that people come and go and so it's not necessarily a conscious decision of like right i need to get rid of this person i know for some that's just for me personally for some people it might it might have to be mm. but you know for me it's just been a, a a real personal journey and a personal thing and then from there kind of like letting the situation unfold itself you know yeah definitely man i think it's it's different for everyone you know there's different things that are going to work for different people the the thing that you mentioned that really interests me is the the going from the nine out of ten to the three out of ten what do you think's been the huge difference like what is it the type of content you're feeding yourself is it the people you're surrounding yourself a bit of both man i think like the content's probably a big one because i, I made a real conscious decision um about oh man like three four years ago but i already knew i was going through some stuff and i already knew you know i had a a, a breakdown of with one of my ex-girlfriends a mental kind of breakdown which was probably about six years ago five six years ago um and i tried to fix it in a short term which didn't work <laughs> so then i had to go right actually what what is it i'm trying to do here what is it i'm trying to achieve and i made a real conscious decision to start reading more books um, and this was a, a decision I just came across with a group of friends while we were on holiday that we wanted to start reading more, um, to start reading more books, start listening to more podcasts and start educating myself about the things that I was interested in. So that could have been people, that could have been certain mindsets and just continually, almost daily taking on that kind of information then helped shape my mentality, mm. um, which then helped me shape the idea and the creation of the dreamer's disease, which then helped you know shape the new relationships that i have with certain people like you know now yourself and the the people that i've interviewed on the podcast um, and the people that i've met through it um and that in turn has then shaped how i now see my future and that has then shaped how you know i want my business and brand to to look like so it's all kind of been a a, a process which has started probably from that intake of content um, and as i said within that you know my relationships with my friends are probably better than they have been you know I've managed to have some really good in-depth conversation with friends recently which three four years ago we would never have done um and you know that's that's for me it's really great um so yeah it's 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 been a a slow process but it's all kind of added up over over time you know Mm, I think people underestimate the the value of like when you reflect on how far you've come and even if you're just starting a new journey even if it's today like from now until like three weeks from now, there's a lot that can change when you're really in tune and you're following what you know to be true yeah. and, and reflection on like celebrating your small wins. You know, I went for a walk, I meditated once, you know, the, this small wins, man, are fucking great. Like, you know, it yeah. takes, a, it takes a lot to wake up at 6am, 5am, 4.30am, yeah. hit the, hit the streets, go for a run, hit the weights, you know? Yeah. Th- th- I think these things are hugely yeah. underestimated and creativity, like, you drew something, it's not a waste of time. Like you're incrementally increasing those skills. And I think that's yeah. very important to mention. Um, yeah, and I think as well, it's like, it's understanding that you can control the type of stuff that you're taking on board every day. It's like, I stopped picking up the newspaper on the tube because it was just full of negative shit that I didn't want to read about and fill my mind with, you know? Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, don't get me wrong. I, I can fully emphasize that, emphasize that there's, you know, a lot of serious stuff happening out in the world, but I'll go and discover that and read about that in my own time. I don't need to be reading it every morning. And like, you know, it's that thing of, if you're following certain accounts or certain people on your Instagram or your social media and they create a negative feeling in you, you have the choice to unfollow that. You don't have to stay following them. Mm. So I can't personally, you know, A, because I don't really care, but because it just infuriates me, like the whole Kardashian-Jenner thing, it's like, 
Oh man, like that just it just makes me angry. Like, yeah, the whole situation of people kind of glorifying them and everything that they they represent, and it's just all completely backwards. So like, I just don't completely, I don't engage with it at all. Like, I couldn't, I don't even know their names, most of them. You know, so mm. it's like you you can choose to ignore certain things. You can you can choose to unfollow people. You can choose to stop reading the daily news. You can choose, you know, whatever it is that, that invokes these negative feelings, that like, you can choose to to undo it. Like it's not like you're being force fed it every day, you know. You can you you have that choice, and that's that's one thing that's been powerful for me, you know. Definitely, definitely agree with that, man. And I'm on the same boat as you. I see a lot of infuriating shit online. Uh, I didn't know this before, but you can tap on an Instagram post and say, "Don't show me this again," or something like that. Man, that's yeah, been yeah. great because since I started doing that, yeah. I don't see any of the bullshit in my feed anymore. It's quite nice. Yeah, um, yeah it's great because you, you can still be following someone without actually seeing their their post so you don't upset anyone as well so <laughs> you know it's a win-win situation <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's probably going to save some people a lot of headache yeah. um alex i'm becoming conscious of the time i really yeah. first of all thank you so much for being here on episode 100 of the podcast um pleasure man it's i wanted to have you as the 100th guest because i know th- there's there's a lot of like future conversations i want to have with you about certain things yeah. and i want people Appreciate to go and check out your channels man like real shit. I don't plug anyone else's stuff. Like usually I just do my own thing, but yeah, go and check out Alex's podcast. Go and leave him a comment, leave him a review on iTunes. While you're doing that, leave us a review too. That will really help us out. Mm. <laughs> um, before we leave, one thing I wanted to ask you, what's the yeah. best advice you picked up along your whole journey? Ah, oh, flip. Uh, <laughs> do you know what? Someone else asked me this recently and I thought, like, I wish just draw a blank because there has been so much, but I think probably just the, um, I think it's not really one bit of advice. I think it's more the mentality of the people that I've kind of come across over this past year and a half through, you know, the podcast, through everything I've kind of been doing and the new situations I find me in. And I think it's having that real positive influence. And I do actually believe that the people that you surround yourself with, you know, have the biggest influence over you more than anything else and there's that you know the quote of you're the sum of the five people five people you spend the most time with and i think that's so true but that doesn't necessarily mean for me it's a physical thing you know you don't physically have to spend the time with these people that could also be the books that you read and the podcasts that you listen to like i'll go and listen to like gary v and lewis Howes and the oprah podcast more than any other podcast so that's three of the five people that i'm spending more time with Plus the books I'm reading are all in a similar kind of vein. So that's another one. And then, you know, the, the people that I'm meeting and chatting to on a, on a more regular basis are those who do want to see me win and do want to see greatness within me. And I see greatness within them. So that's like almost the fifth person. So I think it's, that's the real thing is that, that in, um, encompassing that in my life in terms of, you know, it comes back to what we were saying earlier about the content that you're taking on and what you're, you're, you're feeding your brain with and, that can really play a part in those five people, what those five things are rather than people, you know? Definitely, man. I've, I'm so glad you said that. Cause like I look at Gary and Lewis and a couple of other people, they're my mentors. They never met me before in person, yeah. but I'm here. I'm, I'm in, they're in the room with me pretty much every day. Yeah. And it's very powerful. And do, do you know what's mad thing as well is like, even with Lewis, I was very fortunate to meet him last no summer when I was in, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was in LA and I was so gassed because <laughs> His, his podcast was like probably the biggest inspiration from a podcast point of view of why I started Dreamer's Disease. And again, part of that journey for me was like meeting him and being like, wow, okay, because I started this podcast and because I met this person who then introduced me to that person who has now introduced me to Lewis and now I'm in LA just on holiday and now I'm sitting in his studio in his flat where he records most of his podcasts, chatting to him. I was like, anything's possible in this life, man. Like, honestly, like anything is possible as long as you, you're brave enough and have the courage and, and that positive attitude to go and try it and do it. Like, honestly, anything is possible. Like, for me, that was insane, you know, from being a fan of the podcast. I'm not, I'm not saying we're mates by any means, but to be sat there in front of him having a half hour conversation in his flat. And then, you know, every now and then we will exchange emails. Well, you know, I'd dip in every now and then and ask him for some advice or just big him up for a bit of work that he's done or whatever. You know, it's and, and and like I would never have thought that was possible, man. Honestly, like 
and the same with the, you know, the Gary thing I was saying earlier, it's like these things can happen if you really are genuine enough for a start and, you know, willing to really work towards it and really willing to just enjoy that process, man. Like I didn't set out and be like, right, I want to go and meet Lewis Howes in LA next summer. Like it just happened, man. And it was mm. like, it's being open to be able to accept those opportunities when they arise, you know, that's massively important. Yeah, I'm I'm really glad you you said that, man. Because I think it gave it me gave me encouraged as well. Yeah, bro, thank you so much for dropping the gems and and the encouragement, man. I think a lot of us need it. I think this journey can be lonely, it can be tiring, it can be fucking depressing sometimes. But you know, speaking on people, speaking with people who are actually on it and doing it and actually mm. seeing the results, seeing the benefits, it's just I think it's very encouraging. So yeah. thank you. And I think as well, man. Do you know what? Just before we wrap up, I want to touch mm. on the fact that, you know, it's not, it's not all, I guess, easy. You know, there are days where I think, oh, is this the right thing? Am I on the right path? Like, I get home from work and I'm like, geez, can I be bothered to do three hours, four hours of work now? Mm. And I really have to, like, force myself into those situations. But, again, it's understanding that you will have those days, you will have those moments. The self-doubt is probably the biggest, you know, the imposter syndrome, like, am I good enough to be doing this? The, you know, all of that stuff it's all part of it it's all part of the process and the journey and it's like today i'm just in an incredibly good mindset so you know tomorrow it might be completely different and you know this could have been a, di a different type of conversation but i think it's understanding that and knowing that and being aware of that as well having that self-awareness is super important man super important preach man we need to start a fucking church and just start <laughs> just start shouting this stuff out yeah 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 uh, yeah, man, I think this is this has been great. And I'm really I really want to encourage people to reach out to Alex, hit him up on Instagram. All the links are going to be in the description. Let him know if you've got a question, if you want to yeah, request guests or any of that stuff, just send him questions, send him some love Do it. and follow him and engage with all this stuff that he's putting out. Because it is sick, bro. Like you're putting out Thank you, man. stuff that, that I don't really follow a lot of people online because I don't want to fill up my feed with stuff and I, it mm. keeps me on the thing for longer. But yeah, you watching and listening to the stuff that you're saying is is good encouragement. So everyone is looking thank for you, inspiration. Man. Hit him up, man. It's gonna be a good investment. All right. Thank you. Thank man. you. Appreciate it. Thank that. you are most welcome, my friend. Thank you for being here. Mm -hmm. And thank you everyone for listening and watching, subscribing, talking about my shit. It's all encouragement. I'm getting gassed. We're on episode hundred. We've got like thousands more left. Don't worry about it. We're still we're still yeah. out here every day. Thank you very much. We'll see you all next week. Peace. Mm -hmm.